In this lesson, we're going to look at how you solve square root equations. Solving square root equations are not that complicated if you can solve the resulting equation that you get after you follow the steps to solve square roots. We're going to try to follow a few steps here, beginning with this. You want to isolate the square root where it's the only thing on one side or the other of the equation. Now, occasionally you won't be able to get rid of everything on one side without adding it to another, and you'll end up with square roots on both sides. But one side of the equation has to have just a square root uh, left on it. The next thing we want to do is square both sides. This will get rid of that square root that we have, that we've isolated. And then after we've done that, we want to solve the resulting equation. That equation might be linear or quadratic. It might even be another square root that would force us to isolate again and solve. But we solve whatever's left. And then finally, if it's anything but a linear equation that we're solving when we get the resulting equation, we need to check. Uh, we're checking for the possibility that we have an extraneous solution, which is a solution that, even though we solved and got that number, doesn't actually work in the original equation when we go back and plug it in. And we have to eliminate that as an answer. So let's take a look at an example of one of these, and let's see how we put all that isolate, square, solve, and check to work. Here's a problem that I have. Uh, it has a square root in it, so as soon as I recognize that this is a square root equation, then I know that I'm going to follow the steps, and I'm going to isolate the square root. I'm just going to start doing that by moving the plus 2 over to the other side of the equation, and that will subtract from 32, leaving 30. I'm still not completely isolated because I have a 3 in front of the square root. So I'm going to divide both sides by 3, just using some regular algebra here. And that leaves me x minus 4 under a square root sign equals 10. Now, I have isolated the square root in this case. The next step after we isolate, meaning I have the square root by itself on the left, it's a square both sides. So I'm going to go squared and squared. That's going to eliminate the square root sign on the left, and then I'm just going to square the 10, which is now 100, 10 times 10, and you notice that my resulting equation is linear. It has a degree of 1. The exponent is 1 on the only variable. Uh, so solving a linear equation is very straightforward. In this case, I'm just going to add 4 to both sides, so I now have 104. And actually, since this was a linear equation that I had to solve, I don't even have to check the result, but I could still do that if I wanted to, you know, simply by going back to my original equation, plugging 104 in for x, which I'm doing right now, and I want to see if that is equal to 32. In this case, 104 minus 4 is 100. So I'll be taking the square root of 100. And square root of 100 is 10. 10 times 3 is 30. 30 plus 2 is 32. 32 is equal to 32. It, of course, checks. So this is my solution. There's one solution, and it's 104. Again, if it's linear like this, I don't necessarily have to check the answer for an extraneous solution. Let's take a look at a second example here. Again, we want to isolate the square root and then solve by squaring both sides and solving the resulting equation. So I need to get rid of the negative 3 that's on the side with the square root, so I'm going to add it to the other side. Move it across, becomes positive, and it is now added to x. Now I have isolated the square root, I'm going to square both sides. I'm going to square this, I have to be careful here, and you're squaring the entire side like that. So the left side, rather straightforward, we have x plus 5, but on the right side we have to do a little bit of polynomial multiplication. If you don't know how to do that, I have a video on that subject you could look back at. But remember when you're squaring a binomial like this, uh, you have to write it out as two different things, and then you just do distributive property. x times x gives you x squared, 
and then the first x times the very last 3 gives you plus 3x. And then you do the 3 from the first binomial times x, which is plus 3x again. And then finally 3 times 3 is 9. Combine like terms, x plus 5, and then x squared plus 6x plus 9. And this is my resulting equation that now needs solving. The first thing I realize here is that this has a degree of 2 as a square, so this is a quadratic equation. Now you can solve quadratic equations in a couple of ways. If it will factor, then we can get everything to one side equal to 0 and factor it. If not, we're going to need to use the quadratic formula to plug in. Uh, let's take a look at this one and see if it's going to factor or not by getting everything on the side with x squared and then we will see if it factors. So I'm going to move the x right here to the right side. It becomes negative x when it goes across the equal. I'm subtracting it. And so I now have 6x minus x, which is 5x. And then I'm going to do the plus 5 becomes minus 5 when I move to the right side. And I go 9 minus 5 is plus 4. Now, when I look at this quadratic, it does indeed factor put x and x here. I'm looking for a number that will multiply together to get 4 and add together because of this plus sign right here to get 5. And of course those two numbers are 4 and 1. 4 times 1 is 4. 4 plus 1 is 5. When you're adding, you use the same sign. This one tells you they're both positive. Again, if you forgot how to factor, I invite you to take a look at the lessons on factoring that will help you do that. Once you factored, now we're looking at what value of x will cause each factor to be equal to 0. In the case of the first one, if x is equal to negative 4, uh, then negative 4 plus 4 is 0. And in the second one, if x is equal to negative 1, then the factor will be equal to 0. These are my two potential answers. I say potential because this time it is necessary for me to check these answers to see if either or both solutions could be extraneous. So I'm going to go back to the original equation and I'm going to plug in, first of all, negative 4 for x in both places. And I'm going to ask this question. Is this equal to negative 4? Negative 4 plus 5 is positive 1. The square root of 1 is 1. And then whenever I do 1 minus 3, I get negative 2. Negative 2 is not equal to negative 4. Therefore, negative 4 is an extraneous solution, meaning I have to mark it out as a possible answer. So negative 4 is not an answer for this equation. I need to do the same thing with negative 1. I'm going to plug negative 1 into the original equation in both x's. And I'm going to see 5 minus 1 is 4. The square root of 4 is 2. And this time, negative 3 plus 2 is negative 1. That is a true statement. They are equal. They check. Therefore, this is a solution and, in fact, is our only solution to this square root equation. Let's do one more here that's just a little more complicated. This time when I look at this, I notice that the right side is already isolated. The left side is not, but I can't really isolate both because if I were to subtract one from each side, the left side would become isolated and the right side would not be. So I would just go in a circle here. So what I need to do is just go ahead and square both sides in this case. So I would still just square this one. And whoops, I didn't do that right. I need to square the entire side. So I need to get all So I need to get all of that together and square that entire side. I think I'm going to rewrite it. Like this. And over here. So that I can square both sides. Okay. 
When I square the left side, again, I have to think about this as two binomials. Square root of x plus 2 plus 1 times the square root of x plus 2 plus 1. And on the right side, this one's pretty easy. It just gets rid of the square root like that. So now, x square root of x plus 2 times the square root of x plus 2 is just the square root of x plus 2 squared, which makes the square root go away. That's nice. So I just have x plus 2. And then x plus 2 times 1 is square root of, uh, square root of x plus 2 times 1 is the square root of x plus 2. And same thing here, 1 times the square root of x plus 2 is another 1 on the x plus 2, square root of x plus 2. And finally, 1 times 1 is just 1, like that. Problem looks a little bit long. And I'm going to go ahead and put this together on this side so I can see it a little better. I'm going to have an x here. I'm going to have 2 on the square root of x plus 2, that's 1 plus 1. And then this 2 right here, I'm going to put with the 1 plus 3. And it's equal to 3 minus x. So the first thing I realize is that the resulting equation is still a square root equation. It's not a linear, it's not a quadratic, it's still square root. So I actually need to go in and isolate the square root one more time. Okay, so I'm going to do that by First of all, I'm going to subtract this 3 from the other side. That just makes the 3's go away. 3 minus 3 is going to be 0. And then I'm going to take this x and move it over, and that's going to be negative x and another negative x, meaning on this side I have negative 2x. And I almost have this isolated. I still have a 2 in front that I don't like. So I'm going to divide both sides by 2. And so at least now I have it isolated where I have negative x is equal to the square root of x plus 2. And now I can square both sides. Be careful here. I'm squaring negative x. And I'm going to go back up here a little ways to do this. Negative x squared is just x squared. And the square root sign goes away here. So now I have a quadratic to solve at this point. So I need to get everything on the side with x squared. So I have x squared and then minus x when it goes from the left side it becomes negative and plus 2 becomes negative 2 when it moves across. And again this one will factor because I can ask, what can I multiply together to get negative 2 that subtracts to get 1? So that's 2 and 1, of course. And this tells me the sign of the big one will be negative, and this one will be positive. So my potential x's are x is equal to 2, and x equals negative 1. Now I'm going to go ahead and go back up to the beginning, and I'm going to substitute each of these in to see if it works. And I'm just going to do this in my head this time. 2 plus 2, putting the 2 in for the original x, 2 plus 2 is 4, the square root of 4 is 2, 2 plus 1 is 3, so the left side will be 3. And then on the right side, 3 minus 2 is 1, 3 minus 2 is 1, and the square root of 1 is 1, 3 is not equal to 1, Therefore, 2 is an extraneous solution that I have to mark out. I'm going to do the same thing with negative 1. 2 minus 1 is 1. Square root of 1 is 1. 1 plus 1 is 2 on the left side. And then 3 plus 1 minus minus 1 is 4. Square root of 4 is 2. They are equal. Therefore, this is my solution. Hopefully, that will help you in solving square root equations and you'll be able to do those uh, pretty easily. Again, follow the steps, isolate, square both sides, solve the remaining equation, check for extraneous solutions if it's not linear. If you'd like to see other topics that we can help you with in your algebra, I invite you to go to my website at mymatheducation.com or YouTube channel, My Math Education, 
and see other topics. Thanks for watching. Hope you'll subscribe and come back again. Thank you.